William Galton. <laughs> hey, look, this will be the last. This will be the last lockdown session. It'll be the last podcast. It'll be the last uh, last lockdown session. I think you take the biscuit for being on four sessions. Oh, really? Uh, have yeah, I got? Okay. Am I the medal winner? Yes. Well, the podium. You're coming, back, you're coming back next week as well for a final, <laughs> final version when I can't get <laughs> Um First of all, you're back at the Lockdown Session podcast. <sighs> we've given ourselves a challenge that we can do this in 15 minutes, right? Absolutely, yeah, we have. So I'm going to push the timer. When the alarm goes, we have to, wherever we are, we have to stop. That's it. Okay. You've got to do the two-minute warning at right. the end just so it doesn't like cut off with me going like that. Oh, I'll tell you what. All right, so I'll do that. I'll put mm. I'll put it on thirteen minutes. Yeah, off, exactly. And that will give us a two minute warning. Okay. Yeah. We're off. Perfect. Okay. So I said we were going to just go on the fly, and in lockdown, one of the things that I've loved about these sessions, right, is talking to people and hearing what they've observed. Okay. And in recent months, I, I've been also observing myself, the people I live with, people I see regularly, and of course, you and I both are dog owners. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I want to talk about what we can learn from dogs. Personally, I think there's a maybe a LinkedIn post coming on this at some point. Right? <laughs> yes. What what can leaders learn from dogs? <laughs> well, I yeah. remember we talked about this a little bit because you said to me that I can't remember which podcast it was, but you said I think we called it "Be More Betty," which is obviously right. the name of my youngest uh, my youngest dog. So. Um, but yeah, what can we, so okay, so so, so pose the question again for us. Sir. Right. So this is what I've been thinking. I've been thinking about um how during lockdown a lot of people have, have talked about needing space from the people they're around. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been cooped up in the house with the same people or an apartment, whatever it is. Yeah. So I started to think about when I've needed space during lockdown, either from the kids, you know, from my partner. <laughs> And what I realized was that when I have needed space, it's never precluded my dogs or my okay. cat, actually. But so I might go out, you know, sign and say, right, I'm, I'm off for a walk. I need to I need some space. But I'll take the dog. He doesn't get in the way. Or listen, I'm just going into the bedroom to sit down for 20 minutes. Leave me alone. But if the dog follows me up, Come on, in you come, get on, <laughs> jump on the bed, you can sit with me. So it got me thinking, you know, what what is it about how we are with our pets that means we don't often want space from them, but we do from humans? It's an interesting question. Okay, so uh, I, so, okay, I, I was just thinking about my own experience. Because the truth is, sometimes I do need a break from my dogs, okay? Right. So that's the thing for me. Sometimes I do. Uh, there's some very specific instances. So if I feel, so you got, we've got two dogs. We've got Tilly, the oldest, and Betty, the youngest. Right. So if Tilly is stalking me, kind of, <laughs> for no particular reason, it's like me and my shadow, yeah, yeah, yeah. after a while I kind of want to turn around and kind of go, look, Go and lie down, <laughs> uh, pack it in. Uh, and then correspondingly, when Betty's quite needy, so right. she'll be at the bottom of the stairs making noises. Right. Uh, you know, like, uh, uh, eh, Why eh. yeah, exactly. And after a while, you're just going to go, look, could you pack that up? Uh, <laughs> just pack it in. <laughs> and, then she, and then when you go downstairs, not so much of me, which is probably feedback to me, but certainly <laughs> in relationship to Debbie, she goes absolutely bonkers and barks right. as if she hasn't seen Debbie for about two years. So I'd, I'd say there is a caveat to kind of, uh, you know, preclusion of, of, of one's <laughs> dogs in terms of uh, company and contact. I also think, though, what was interesting about what you said is you said that you know, your dog follows you up, but you don't mind because there's no expectation. You're not going to have to listen to anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 terrible admittal. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or even, actually, sometimes just you don't even need to speak. Yes, that's it. In fact, you benefit from it. There's an actual big kind of whiff them for you, which is you get to, because from a kind of health perspective in terms of making contact, you get to fuss somebody and that somebody yeah. isn't talking to you. And in yeah. fact, you know what else? You don't have to listen, but there's no jobs being added to your list. 
There's no tasks that are coming through. Is that, is that feedback for devs? No, no, uh, no. I'm just talking very theoretically, obviously. Very, general. very you, theoretical. This uh, but, but doesn't but apply to me at all. Um, but I think you're, there's, there's truth in that, right? I, yeah. I was talking to, to our friend Laura and fellow coach, and she describes a similar experience actually with her cat, Felix. And she'll say, you know, there are times when she would have been out on a workshop all day and she'll come home and she's just delighted to just be there with the cat, not have to talk. Or even if she does talk to the cat, that kind of, you mentioned it, that non-expectation. So this gets me thinking, especially from a coaching point of view. Go on. A leadership point of view. Yeah. Why is it we put such huge expectations on people? We judge them whether they fulfill those expectations and that creates a kind of disconnect yeah that we don't tend to have with animals because they're non-judgmental i think you said a couple of words there which i think uh are quite quite key to what we're talking about which is the expectation right as in having them and also the judgments um, as in them being made of us or us making them of somebody else. So I think that there is, you know, when you think about, um, uh, when you think about a dog or a cat for that matter, I mean, I'm definitely more dog than cat, to be honest with you. Mm. But if you think about a dog there, there, you know, there are no expectations and they're so real time. They're just pleased to see you. Look, okay. even if you come, well, I'm going to challenge that, right? Go on, come with, on then. So I'm going to challenge that with Rocky, who is present. Uh, at the moment, um, every time I stand <laughs> up <laughs> or even move, Rocky is like, I'm up and I'm ready for a walk. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I'm going to get a glass of water. Okay, let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean about Betty. But also, it's very unconditional. I mean, it's just literally right. He's up. I'm up, and then and then he, and then you just kind of go. But there's no expectation. There's no maybe, judgment. There maybe we're we're projecting. Maybe the dog is, <laughs> is expecting a walk. Actually, Rocky Perhaps. expects like forty-two walks a day, which is why, but like, finally pick his lead up or I pull on my my trackies that I wear to walk the dog like when when the trackies come out he's beside himself classic Pavlov <laughs> right classic Pavlov's dogs so but, but I think what's interesting about that which is also what does the dog do when you then go back into your office with your glass of water oh the sadness on the face really the projection I'm putting onto the dog of Really? Really? Yeah, that's interesting. You should get a better dog. No, so oh, yeah, well, I, 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 <laughs> so, so we've got two. So there's Ginger and Rocky. Rocky's just Rocky's five years old, so he's alert. He's really happy to just be alive. His tail's permanently wagging, uh, and he would run and chase a ball as long as he's got a ball. I mean, Rocky will bring a ball to you if you, you know, even if you've been on two walks. So you, you, we don't play ball <laughs> in the house, right? That's you know, that's a dog rule. That's wise. Right, and uh, um, that way breakages don't happen as regularly. Exactly. And Rocky gets bored, and he'll go and get a ball from the dog pen, and uh, he'll just drop it in front of you, and then he'll <laughs> sit and stare. Like, for two hours, he won't move. He'll just expect you at some point to pick that ball I mean, up. look, come on, seriously, like, can you, t I mean, how much discipline oh, does that know. require? That's well, like zen. What can we learn? What can leaders learn from dogs? Stillness, patience, right. but based yeah. on... I mean, t t so tell me about Ginger. What happens with Ginger? Well, Ginger's different. So Ginger Ginger has, rather than expectation, it's more hope with Ginger. Okay, how old's Ginger? Ginger's 10. She's a Labrador. She's established either a one or a two walk day. She doesn't mind. Okay. She's a little bit stiff with arthritis now. Yeah. So actually, if it's one walk a day, she's happy. Okay. And she'll mince around, she'll roll around in fox poo. She's really, that's a happy day. Yeah, sounds great. Well, obviously not for me, but yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get up, she, she doesn't have an expectation yeah. of, of anything. It's more hope. Could we be doing something? Yeah, okay. But if we're not, she kind of drops back down with a great big sigh as though you've just told her she can't go into railing with her partner. Or, or you're not paying for her to go and watch the latest gig. <laughs> over, I mean, it's like you know, you've grounded her. 
Um, I mean, really, William, there are times when the people in this house are sitting on the floor and the dogs and the cat are lying on the sofa. <laughs> it's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You also said what can leaders learn. I, I would say one thing, which is something which I love um, about dogs, which is they're very real time. Right. So if the, you know, yeah, there might be a little bit of a huffing and a puffing, perhaps, um, uh, you know, but if you compare that to when a human being doesn't get their way, um, I think dogs are very much more, okay, it's not now, uh, fair enough, okay. And dogs then five minutes cool. later, it's a bit like, they'll be like sort of, Where's is it now? Yeah, yeah. Is, is it now? Are we doing it now? Is it now? Uh, no, it isn't. Okay. So actually they're able to forgive as well. Yeah, their bounce back ability is much higher. Yeah, right. So, so if something it, really doesn't go away as human beings. I don't know about you. I've had moments where things really haven't gone my way, whereby I've been thinking about that thing for days. Right. So we don't let it go. We take things personally. Yeah. We get stuck and then we don't enjoy the moment. Yeah. Whereas dogs don't take it personally. They let go instantly. Yes. And they just move to the next moment and go, well, what about now? Exactly. Exactly. So they're quite assertive as well. Yeah, very, very much so. They're very pragmatic, I would say, and very assertive, but in a very loving way as well. Yeah. Um, and you're but, right. I think that letting, so there's, you know, letting go, being in the moment, being yeah. still, being Zen focused, uh, being forgiving. I mean, all of these qualities, and we talked today, don't we? You and I did a talk with that, with uh, Frank and Anna on inclusivity and inclusive yes. And, you know, everybody's talking about courage and vulnerability and safety. And I do think with, you know, my, my musings on my walk, that this, this concept of looking at animals and, uh, you know, therapists use horses and dogs mm -hmm. a lot with people with special needs to help create connection um, and attachment and understand responsibility. So there's some wonderful lessons that already animals are used, you know, to teach us <laughs> Neanderthals, basically. But wouldn't it be cool if actually maybe there's maybe there's a market for this, William, and we create a leadership program around bringing everybody away with their dogs or we give them a dog to be with over that. What a great idea. <laughs> and a great... build a relationship <laughs> with the dog because that trust. Yeah. You know, the, the camaraderie, the intimacy, the safety, the credibility, the reliability, actually, all of those elements of the trust equation, you've got to build that with a dog. Yes, you do. Without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, and also what's interesting, I think, just thinking about what you said there with the uh, trust equation, dogs are more forgiving. Right. So coming back to this, which is they're very real time. So um you know something i mean look don't get me wrong they'd be wary of another dog if something doesn't work out but it, it but i think they're much more forgiving um as a uh as a sentient that's the right word i think being um they're more forgiving but also i mean it's interesting isn't it which is if i if i if i also really think about this for a moment i guess that <laughs> in terms of routines they have good routines right so, you know, they eat at certain points. They go out at certain points to do their business. There's walks which happen at certain points. And okay, it may not be enough walks, but they don't then sulk for the next three days because there wasn't enough walking. No, um, exactly. There's none of that stuff. <laughs> so essentially, we're going to be given our two-minute warning. In fact, I can see my, uh, my phone flashing right now. So we're on our two-minute warning, okay. William. Um, there is so much we can learn from dogs. I think I've definitely got enough, even just from this little mini pod, that uh, I might do a little uh, LinkedIn post on what, what leaders can learn from dogs. Um, I also think that my dogs have really helped save my mental health over this lockdown. Spot on. I mean, it, I'm so glad you said that, because I do think that if you think about people who... I mean, look, there's companies whereby they have days when people bring in dogs. Right. Dogs are actually brought in because people know that dogs cheer people up. 
Yeah. And, and you know, it's interesting because it's so said, stupid. Yeah, yeah. And loyal and loving and caring. And they know kind of when they're sort of, okay, fair enough, I'll leave it now. And then five minutes later, how about now? Can you run my tummy <laughs> now? Um, you, you know, there's all of that stuff that happens because they are so real time. But I, I, I mean, you know, I, 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 if you just look at businesses, the number of things I've seen on LinkedIn when people kind of go, it's, you know, bring our dog, bring our pet to work day. And people love that. You can see people looking really happy because you're right about the mental health. Maybe this isn't just about leaders. Because you said, you know, what can we learn from leaders? I, I remember years ago, we, we used to work in professional football and we were doing a contract with Tottenham Hotspur. Martin Yol was the manager. I had Amber, the Labrador in those days. And I used to take her to the games, uh, to the, the training pitch for the coaching. The footballers loved talking to her. They would <laughs> yeah. tell her a story. They would play football with her. And she loved Piggy in the middle. She used to play with Jermaine Genus and Jermaine Defoe. She used to pass the ball. She used to jump on the ball. <laughs> um, and it's those, those kinds of great moments that I think, yeah, throughout our history, right? Dogs, dogs tamed us, not the other way around. Um, they approached us first, didn't they, when they, they approached the fire all those years ago? Yeah. Uh, William, we got like 10 seconds before the bell goes. Um, final lockdown thoughts. Uh, your message to everybody after all these sessions we've done. Wow. Uh, final thought. Stay well, stay safe, everybody, would be my final thought. I think that's nice. Uh, William, thank you so much for joining me. We're going to bring a new podcast out in the summer. Uh, I have absolutely no doubt uh, you'll be one of the first guests on it. Fantastic. I look forward to it. You take care. Look after yourself, Brad. Great yeah, to see William, you. Thanks. See you later. Cheers. See you later. Bye for now doesn't work we can just gotta go okay we need to think about it a bit more you know what i've recorded that bit so we'll leave that in 